For today's In Focus, we travel to the Okok Plateau in the Altai Mountains region of Russia. For it was here, between 1924 and 1949, that archaeologist Sergei Rudenko excavated a series of burial mounds. These consisted of five large and nine small stone-covered features, containing tomb shafts up to five metres deep. Within were well-preserved, embalmed bodies. The best-preserved tomb had been burrow number two. The most striking feature of these bodies were the vivid tattoos. This body art depicted real and imaginary creatures, griffins, rams, snakes, birds and deer. On one of the men the tattoos covered much of his body. This was a real statement, a living piece of art. Elsewhere in Barrow too were remarkable pieces of furniture. Here a table with lions for legs. Also elegant polished metal mirrors and ornaments of silver and gold. From the elegant to the more prosaic, all of these objects spoke of trade links with Persia and beyond. Barrow 5 was particularly rich, with felt hangings upon its walls depicting elegant patterns and animals such as lions. The craftsmanship involved was lavish and intricate. This was impressive by any standards. The tombs dated to around 400 BC, the Iron Age, a time of powerful trading lords, but also a time of horses. Such equine love was reflected in the tombs. This is the saddle for a horse, and each tomb contained between seven and fourteen horse burials. Every aspect, from the bridles to the saddles to the horse's cloths, were intricate, lavishly detailed, and lovingly made. Indeed, if the effort which went into clothing and decorating these animals was a reflection of life, they would have been extremely well cared for horses. No detail was too lavish. To their masters, they were clearly more than horses. And if the appearance of the horse's headgear is anything to go by, their masters clearly wanted others to share this opinion also. The remarkable state of preservation of all of these finds leads to one inevitable question. Why did they survive? Why here? Well, quite simply, they were frozen. The tombs were dug in the warm season when the ground was pliable. Warmer, moist air was trapped within the tomb, and when winter came, everything froze. The water encased everything else within the tomb, and things were preserved, right down to the braids in the hair. But this isn't the end of our story. In 1993, when many people were off to see Jurassic Park, archaeologist Natalia Poloshmak was on the verge of unearthing another frozen barrow. Thankfully, this tomb had not fallen prey to grave robbers, and the body of a well-preserved, tattooed, 25-year-old female was found within a log coffin. As with Rodenko's finds, the tattoos were stylized animalistic forms, here the antlers of a deer. The tomb was carefully excavated, and the finds taken to Moscow, and perhaps appropriately studied in the very place where Russia's former communist leaders had been embalmed. It is worth mentioning that some have criticised the standards of transportation used to move the finds. Also, the methods used to defrost the corpse have been identified as potentially having destroyed evidence, or even having warped and disfigured the corpse itself. Despite this, much was learned from the remains, and the Ice Maiden, or Ice Princess, became famous. Interest in the find peaked, and a reconstruction of her face was commissioned based upon her skull and other measurements. Notice the headdress in the picture with which she was also buried. This face naturally prompted the question, just who was she? Who might she have been? For answers, some looked to the Greek historian Herodotus, who had famously written about warrior women to the east. Could she have been a so-called Amazonian warrior chief? Whatever the case may be, over the next decade a tug of war commenced over her remains and their rightful place. The people of the Okok Plateau, supposedly egged on by shamans, were claiming that she was rightfully theirs, and also, ever since she had gone missing, terrible things had befell the region. They pointed to a series of earthquakes, evidence that they had been cursed and indeed some remembered that the helicopter which transported her away had almost crashed in a blizzard. Could this also have been a result of a curse? Some even claim that the reconstruction of her face is inaccurate, that a European, oppressive colonial look has been forced upon her. 
All of these claims have been heavily disputed by the Russian Academy of Sciences, and to this date the Ice Maiden's remains have not been returned to the Okok Plain. Despite these political tensions, all of these remains speak of a remarkable Iron Age culture flourishing in the Altai Mountains. These were confident, powerful nomadic people who painted their bodies with elegant tattoos and traded far and wide. Whether a warrior, as Herodotus would have her, or simply a confident manager of men, our maiden was most certainly a powerful individual. And the Academy of Sciences are probably glad that such a person is not here to dispute these modern national boundaries and her right to lie where she was buried.